信じて頑張ってみる<笑> Days with my stepsister episode number six I know this might surprise some of you guys but little little did you know I'm not a fake youtuber what that means is I'm not somebody who comes on this platform and just posts lies or fake, you know, fake things like, you know, fake reactions or, you know, fake reviews or fake positivity or fake negativity. Now, I know that might be hard to believe because sometimes I am really negative and sometimes I am really positive, but I'm a human being and my emotions change. Uh, and that also changes day by day. Like if I'm having a really good day and I have an anime that makes my day even better, then like, okay, I'm gonna feel a certain way about it. And if I'm having a blah day and then I watch a blah anime, I'm gonna feel a certain type of way. On the flip side, if I'm having not a great day and I watch an anime that uplifts me, you know, that that's an experience. And if I have an anime that was awful, that takes me down, that's an experience. So, you know, when I come on here every single week and I review episode by episode, sometimes I'm talking about the, I'm, I'm talking about the show at a whole, but most times I'm just talking about that specific episode and how it affects the the show as a whole. Uh, sometimes negatively, sometimes positively. Now, the reason I wanted to start the video with with that is I keep it pretty a buck with you guys, which that means I I keep it pretty true. I'm I'm pretty you know upfront with you know upfront and transparent. And when it comes to days with my stepsister, I've I've talked in nauseum at this point of. This show has a very careful line. And I'm going to try not to re completely, you know, repeat myself and, you know, but this show has a very careful line that it trots between interesting and boring. And depending on the subject matter episode, uh, depending what's happening in that episode, depending, you know, what the needle is getting moved, it can, it can dip into boring. And this is, this is now to me, the second episode that has dipped into really, really boring. And I'm not saying that the the show is bad. I'm not saying I'm gonna drop it. I'm just saying that this episode was boring, but it was within brand, if that makes sense. Like it stayed on brand and it's not much different pacing and ambiance and stuff like that that it's depicting. It's just that subject matter of this episode kind of dipped into boring, at least for me personally. Uh, and that's the line that they're teeter tottering when they have this like awkward, awkward. I know I already said the word, but awkward ambiance, awkward vibes that they're trying to depict. You know, they're trying to depict these very two awkward 15, 16, or I think they're 16, you know, 16 year old kids uh, who are dealing with societal, you know, a lot of pressures and, you know, things that, that are really, you know, big feelings when you're that, when they're, when you're that young. But in keeping truth, I paused this episode four times because I was getting that bored. Now, some of the subjects, some of the things that occurred this episode, you know, uh, were interesting. Some of the things, I, I had too much time to think. So the interesting part is, or the interesting, I don't know how to feel about it part, is Asamora. Uh, you know, Utah, Utah Asamura, the, the, our main character, you know, one of the two main characters here, he's falling in love with Saki. And the show does a very good job of depicting the fact that he's falling in love with Saki. Now, I wish the show would do a better job because I, I don't consider Utah the MC or Saki the MC. I consider them both the MC. I would, I would love if the show did a better job of not always just showing us Utah's POV, that they actually showed us Saki's as well. Because although we see from his angle that he's starting to really think about her a lot, and I think even he's realizing that, you know, he's catching big feelings. He's catching feelings for this girl. On the reciprocal end, I think Saki has already gotten there. Uh, through her actions, we've noticed, right? Like she came to him, you know, came on to him uh, in more ways than one, you know, not just the scene that we saw in the bedroom, but like she's come up pretty strong in some ways more than once. Uh, and uh, she's she's done so and so much in a way to where even her best friend has noticed. And even in this at the end of this episode, you know, she ended up, you know, summertime's around the corner. She's applying to work 
where he works, not only to be closer to him, but also because she's very clearly jealous of his senpai, and she wants to monitor that situation, uh, and she knows that if she doesn't act fast, at least I feel like she knows this, I feel like if she, if she knows that if she doesn't act fast, that the senpai, you know, could make something happen there with our boy Utah. So those things I do genuinely like. Now, I mentioned to you, I had time to think this episode because it was so boring. Uh, the first thing I thought about was her best friend. So her best friend is, is really pushing the envelope between these two, okay? Her best friend is really pushing the envelope of trying to, you know, matchmake and put them together. And I find that so weird. And the reason I find that so weird is she's clearly aware that their parents are in a situation and in a relationship. And as a friend, you know, I I can't imagine pushing my buddy into a situation where he finds himself lusting or going after what's now his stepsister. Even when I was really young, like, I, don't, I, I just can't see myself doing that. Of course, you know, make a little joke, like, hey, get a little peep in, you know. Um, you know, make jokes and stuff, like, hey, you know, uh, if, it, if it falls, you know, do a sniff test, you know. Making jokes and shit, but not genuinely, like, oh, yeah, legitimately go after her, boo that thing up. Like, no, you wouldn't do that, you know. Most people, I think, wouldn't do that. So I find that weird, but, you know, I guess if her best friend's looking out for her friend's happiness, I guess. The second thing I had time to think of is where the F are these parents at? So I, her mom works the nightlife, okay? And I, I get that. Her mom works the nightlife. You know, her mom, uh, you know, works, you know, works at nights and she must leave at like 5 p.m. or something. But you would imagine that mom more often than not would be home by the time that these kids are getting home from school at what, 4 o'clock or something like that. But she's just not existent. So it's like, but she exists during the daytime, you would you right? And then the dad, where the fuck is the dad at? Like, no matter, like, I, I'm a full-time dad and, you know, all the other stuff, and I do YouTube, whatever, like, I got a 9 to 5, but that's what it is. Like, you come home. So the dad should be getting, like, as mom leaves, dad should be getting home. But, like, these parents just don't exist. And I guess they don't exist because, you know, that's the, what the story, they want to depict just these two kids alone and... Uh, love is brewing because they're just, they're too close to each other, like literally in proximity of each other. But where the F are these parents at? And no matter what you say, like, oh, he's a salary man and whatever else is like, yeah, okay, I get that. You know, some days he's probably going to have some overtime, going to work extra and stuff. But that's not every day. That's not every day. You know what I mean? And then the second part of it is, um, if his dad could afford to keep them afloat, before with just him and and utah you have to imagine that you know having two more mouths to feed isn't that much of a stretch like don't have mom's work have her be you know happier not working or something like that those are my final thoughts though i have way more to say on that but i'm not gonna harp on it because i know sometimes you guys are like oh you go you're getting too much of the weeds and stuff and i'm like i know but i can't help because that's what the show's presenting to me but i'll say this episode was fine it was boring though uh and that's how i feel right now hopefully next week can take me to that next level. All right, my friends. See you then. Peace.